you would like to pray? Yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah, good morning and welcome to today's session. The session has been recorded. So today we're going to study on the book of Colossians, even before we could begin. Uh, can I request it to lead us in prayer? Father, thank you for this day, Lord. We come to the throne of great come to the throne of grace lord you have given this day lord as what we are going to learn from your word lord each and everything which we will be learning from your word lord it should not be wasted but it should be used for the kingdom expansion lord for your all glory be given to you lord lord we thank you for the G teacher and all the students who will be learning from your word lord in jesus name we pray and bless everyone amen 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 thank you thank you sid for leading us into prayer and yeah today we are going to study on one of the epistle of Paul, which he wrote to the church at Colossians. So what do we know about this letter? Any input that you would like to give before we could start? What do we know about this letter to Colossians? Aradhana, Reuben, Anyone, just feel free to share something. Yes, Brother Lubega, please go ahead. In, in one sentence, it is a short hand of Ephesians. Yes, yes. Anyone else would like to add to what Lubega said? You can definitely refer to your notes, that's okay, but I want everyone to be active and be part in the session. Sid, what you would like to add about this letter? Anita, Subhashish, anyone, just feel free to give your input about this letter. While I post the presentation, while I share the presentation, Was it a prison epistle? One of the prison epistles? Yes, it was. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Colossians, the supremacy of Jesus and all things. And can we see Colossae where it is in the map? It is one of the map of those days. We see Col uh, Colossae in Asia Minor. And Paul in his missionary journey, the second missionary journey, he just passed over and he went to Ephesus and he ministered to people there. So we will study how the gospel reached Colossians, the church in Colossians. Just give me a minute while I just present it. Okay. So you're all able to see the map. Okay. So... <clears throat> Sorry, the prison epistle generally refers to the four letters that is written by Apostle Paul. What are those? He wrote this when he was under the house arrest at Rome. So which are those four letters that was written by Apostle Paul at prison? Yes, Brother Lubega, please go ahead. I think the letters that is Ephesians. There is also Philippians, don't forgetting is uh, Colossians and uh, Galatia. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Brother Lubega. The first three was right. The four letters were Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and the letter to Philemon. Well, yes, the letter to Philemon was addressed to a specific individual, whereas the other three, that is Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians, were addressed to a specific church, while <clears throat> Paul addressed specific needs of the first century Christians and the church there. And the message of this prison epistle is still powerful and significant to every Christian who are living today. We also see, uh, yes, as Apostle Paul being the author, this letter was written at the prison, uh, uh, you know, at prison when he was at 
uh, the house arrest at Rome during the period of 60 to 61 AD. And some scholars say it was about 62 AD as well. So as we know, the dates are just an approximate. Um, but, uh, let's look at the city of Colossae. So this city of Colossae was located 100 miles east of Ephesus. So historically, Colossae was a prosperous city and famous for its fabric dyes. And the ancient records once described it as a very populated city, which was prosperous and great and powerful. And it stood on the great highway between Ephesus and Euphrates. Not many generations after Paul's time, well, it disappeared from the pages of the history. The Turks destroyed it and left it in ruins. So it is not mentioned anywhere else in the New Testament or the city of or uh, about the city of Colossae. And it is not even mentioned in the book of Acts. So all our Bible information uh, about the Colossian church comes only from this letter and few references from the letter to Philip. So little is known about the town in this period other than it was nearly destroyed also by an earthquake in AD 60 or 61. We see that a short time later, the date of this epistle, we have a testimony of Eusebius where Tychicus also mentioned about this earthquake which happened around 60 AD. So the city of Lodosia and Hierapolis are quickly rebuilt. So Lodosia can even be described as a rich city when the book of Revelation is written 30 years much later. We also see the Colossians never recovered from this disaster. Unfortunately, little is known about the city in the first century. Well, as we see that, we also see the city of Colossians was probably the smallest and the least important city that Paul ever wrote to. So it might surprise us that Paul would turn his attention to the Christians in Colossae at a time when he had so many other concerns to be uh, addressed. Yet he thought the situation in Colossae was important even for the apostles attention. We see <clears throat> there was a person named Euphrase, sorry, the person named Ep Epaphras, who heard the gospel when Paul was in Ephesus. As Paul taught in the lecture hall of Tyrannus at the resident of Asia, heard the word of the Lord. So we see that uh, in Acts chapter 19, Verse 10. Can I request one of you all to turn to Acts 19 10? Acts 19 10. This went on for yes. two years. So that all the Jews and the Greeks who lived in the province of Asia heard the word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. So we see that the, the residents of Asia heard the word of the Lord. And it would not be surprising if some people from Colossae heard the gospel at that time as well. So from these sources, when we go through the Colossians chapter 1, verse 6 and 7, we see that uh, from these sources, we learn that Epaphras was responsible for bringing the gospel to the Colossians. So verse 7 says, as you also learned from Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on our behalf. So we see that the church at Colossae was founded by Ifa 
Epaphras. Epaphras. So, who was a, uh, so let's look at who's this person. What was his background in nature? Who was he? So, when we look at that, um, he was a native of this place and a zealous worker for the Lord. And he was a disciple of Paul from Ephesus. Well, we also heard his name in yesterday's class when we were uh, studying the letter to Philippians, where as one of the key characters among Paul Timothy was Epaphras, and his name was Epaphroditus. That is his uh, full name. And Epaphras is the short form of Epaphroditus. So uh, his name means lovely, fascinating, charming. And it also means a uh, servant who delivered a gift. And uh, yeah, a gift to Paul. That's what he addressed to in Philippians 2.25, where uh, Paul addresses that as the Philippians church sent word and offering through Epaphras. So he said he addressed him as the servant who delivered a gift. Uh, well, uh, we also see about him, uh, 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 Paul uh, addresses good things about Epaphras was, he was a faithful minister of Christ. He was a preacher of the gospel and he was a teacher of the foundation principles. And um, the uh, in Colossians chapter 4, we see that Paul addressing him as a man of fervent prayer, a man of passion for the local church. And as we study the other letters, we also see that he's been mentioned only three times in the New Testament. That's in the letter of Colossians and the letter of Philemon. So he may have been an effective evangelist in uh, in those days at Colossae. And the city of Lodosia and Hierapolis both had thriving churches in the first century. Maybe it was one of the uh, 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 true Epaphras. So Paul tells the church that Epaphras had reported about their faith uh, in, in Christ. And this encouraged Paul also. And he was a man of prayer. We also see how Paul describes him uh, in the letter saying that he wrestled in prayer. And also we see that... Uh, Epaphras exercised a pastoral and a teaching ministry among the Colossian believers. So as he uh, as he in turn learned this from Paul himself. So the church at Colossae was evidently composed of mostly Gentile converts with little of Jewish base. So what was the purpose of this letter? Can anyone say what was the purpose of this letter? Anyone, Sid, can you give us the purpose of this letter? Ma'am, I didn't get that. Can you please repeat that? The purpose. What was the purpose of this letter? For Paul to write this letter to Colossians, what was the purpose? Ma'am, it was written for the specific problems at Colossae. Like in, it includes Paul most eloquently writing about Jesus Christ, containing a soaring paragraphs. Okay. This Are there is what any I points think. given? Uh, as there any points given in your notes? The very purpose of the letter. Ma'am, like in chapter two and three, it deals with the dangerous tendencies in Colossae. Paul is arguing against the min about the ministry, or yeah, about the mystery religion, but firmly asserting Christ is a complete expression of mystery of God. Yes, yes, thanks, thanks, Sid. So we, uh, yes, Lubega, please go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry, I had not put on my mic. I think, Pastor, there was some error. 
uh, in teaching because as we see that Paul himself had not started the church, as that man, the name is very hard for me, Apophorus or something like that, Apophorus. had the, started that church there. There were some people now who were like uh, saying his teachings and the teachings of others were not right. So that's why he had to travel to, to, to Rome, despite the fact that uh, our own Paul was, was in the hospital, I mean, was in prison. He had to bother him to get some, some guidance from him as far as the false teachings were concerned. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, Lubega, for addressing the purpose of this letter. Yes, as Paul writes this letter, in order to warn against certain errors of doctrine and practices, which was addressed by Epaphras when he met Paul in the prison. So there are four points. The first one was to warn them against the human philosophy and to urge them to give Christ the supreme place or the pre eminence and secondly we see that to warn them against the ritualism of judaizers the third we see that the very purpose was to warn them against the worship of angels and mysticism fourth to warn them against the uh, asticism that means a doctrine that through self-torture or self-denial one can discipline himself to reach a higher state a spiritual intellectual uh, to reach a spiritual or a intellectual level so these were some of the practices that was trying to creep in into the church at Colossae which was not right not aligned with the gospel message so paul was trying to address certain issues and that was the main reason why he wrote this letter so he sent this letter to them through uh tichikis who is accompanied by onesimus so paul himself hopes to visit them later so these are the names that we also heard in the last letter so about onesimus we will study in the next letter as we study about the letter to philemon we will study in detail who was onesimus well the three the the very theme of the letter to colossians was the preeminence of christ and the key verses i have many key verses listed here let me present that to you There are, uh, uh, I've listed the key verses from uh, four, all four chapters because I felt uh, though this letter is very simple and small, but there's a lot of themes and key verses that we could pick from each and every chapter. So some of the key verses that I've listed from Colossians chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, we can go through it, uh, where in chapter 1 we see that Jesus is the image of the invisible God. And the same chapter, verse 18, we see that he is the head of the church. In chapter 2, 10, we see that he is the head of all principality and power. And verse 13 and 14, we see that he has made us alive with Christ. And chapter 3, 9, we see that do not lie to one another. And it goes on to chapter 4, we see that uh, about the, um, the importance of prayer and how uh, how to continue steadfastly in prayer and uh, in verse 5 to 6 we see that he talks about walk in wisdom towards the outsiders yeah as we uh, uh, address some of the key verses from all four chapters um, we also see some of the unique features that is uh, Nominant in the letter to Colossians is the most Christological Paul's letter contains the Bible's sharpest picture of Christ preeminence. And in chapter 2, we see that it contains Bible's strongest warning against the dangers of the human philosophy. And Paul addresses uh, the, the other unique feature we see in this letter is the shortest uh, the shorter form of Paul's benediction or um, the characteristics of his 
later let us occurs for the first time here. So as we went through uh, some of the uh, features, and the purpose of this letter, let's look at what were the specific problems that Paul was addressing in this letter. So <clears throat> we will see that in detail. We see that uh, when Ephaphras met Paul, he let him know about concerns about the doctrinal error that was creeping into the church. Along with that, he also addressed that the errors revolved around two main philosophies that were circulating at that time. So what was that? They actually may have been combined into one in the teacher that comes into the church. So in either case, the heresies represented two clear strains. What are those? First one was revived Judaism. We see in chapter 2 from verse 11 to 17 is addressing that. Due to time, I will just paraphrase that whole, uh, what he was addressing to. Here we see that. So uh, Paul is addressing that in him, you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the sin of the flesh, but the circumcision of Christ, so that we are buried with him in baptism in which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. And verse 14, we see that, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. So with that, we see that there was an unusual attempt of many of the Judaizers to bring the New Testament believers back into the bondage of law by insisting them on a return to tradition of the past. So this would have caused by an inability to understand and relate to the past in light of the present revelation from God. So Paul had to address that in these verses from 11 to 7, when we see that these which are the shadow of things to come, but the substance is of Christ, he addresses in verse 17. So these Judaizers were insisting the people on certain things. So what are the certain things that they were insisting when we went through this passage? We see that they were insisting on the circumcision, on uh, uh, on a clean and unclean foods, celebrating of feast days, keeping the Old Testament Sabbath. So which were uh, traditionally, it was very important because they were tradition focused. So they were Try, trying to emphasize these things on the Gentile new believers. So Paul made it very clear to them that all of those things were only shadows of the reality that would come to in Christ himself. And the second is see that Gnosticism, where we see that in chapter 2, verse 18 to 23. Can I request one of you all to read? Colossians chapter 2 verses 18 to 23. Do not let anyone who delights in false humanity and the worship of angels disqualify you for the price. Such a person goes into great detail about what he has seen as his unspiritual mind puff him as an idle notation. He has lost connection with the head from whom the whole body supported and held together by the ligaments and sinews grow as God's cause it grows. 20. Since you died with Christ to the basic principles of this world, why as though you still be long to it? Do, do you submit to its rules? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. These are all destined to perish perish with use because they are 
based on human commands and teachings such regulation indeed have been appearance of wisdom with their imposed worship self imposed worship their false humanity and their harsh treatment of the body but they lack any values in restraining sensual indulgence thank you thanks sid so we see that uh, <clears throat> some of the traits of the system that is gnosticism so what is gnosticism it was a philosophy that attempted to explain the universe the source of evil the concept of god and man a uh, pursuit of supreme being and spiritual experience so it was a new age culture of that day that was reserved for those of the superior intellect so it took a bit and pieces of many religions and blended them into one for this reason it was constantly changing to somehow be inclusive of all of the religions of the day so some of the traits of this system was self imposed humility self imposed humility we also see uh, other things that are listed here was austere treatment of the body and the suppression of the appetite and exaltation of the spirit world and angels lack of knowledge of the superiority of the lordship of christ and a sense of superior wisdom so paul refers to all these heresies as supersive words philosophy empty deceit appearance of wisdom but not wisdom basic principles of the world and the doctrines of men we see that he addressed in chapter 2 very clearly and also along with that paul wants the colossians not to let them self to be uh, indulged or spoiled by these heresies so paul did not want them to be a part of all these we see in colossians chapter 2 verse 4 he says now this i say lest any one should deceive you with pervasive words and also in 18 uh, verse 18 he says that let no one cheat you of your reward so this word means to be deceived let led astray or uh, led astray by the false reasoning so paul is asking us and he is warning us do not get yourself deceived so just like the colossians church the various problem that they had with the false teaching and the false doctrine that was trying to creep into the church we can also apply it in our time there are a lot of false teaching and false doctrines those are uh, you know trying to creep in through the social media through the other various channels into us but we need to uh, we need to be focused we need to stick on to the word of god we need to see what the word of god says let the word of god be the final authority to each of us and this is what paul says in chapter 2 verse 8 saying that beware lest any one cheat you through the philosophy or empty deceit according to the traditions of men is all man made be very careful so this word means to be uh, to not to be carried out by any of these or uh, uh, let us be uh, beware and not to become prey to any of these kind of false teachings so when paul uh, talks about be, be beware in verse 8 he talks about is asking us to be constantly looking out for something or to keep a watchful eyes open for some danger that is ahead so paul is warning us be diligent be vigilant in certain areas when it comes to the false teaching and the false doctrines paul also answered the various needs of the colossians heresy as those days for which paul answered in this letter uh, saying that uh, there are some heresies and how he is addressing um, 
these heresies through this letter to us. Let me present that slide. So these are some of the heresies. Are we able to see that? Yes. So these are some of the heresies that Paul uh, is addressing in this letter. So in chapter 1, verse 15 to 20, we see that he's addressing spirit is good, matter is evil. This is the heresy that has come up. So Paul addresses in chapter 1, 15 to 20, he says that God created heaven and earth for his glory. And the next point, we see that one must follow ceremonies, rituals, and restrictions in order to be saved or perfected. And in chapter 2, verse 11 and 16, in chapter 3, verse 11, we see that Paul says, Paul gives an answer for all. He's saying that these were only the shadows that ended when Christ came. So he is all we need to be saved and the next heresy we see here is one must deny the body and live in rest uh, live in strict asceticism so for that he says in ver uh, chapter 2 verse 20 to 23 he says that asceticism is not help in conquering evil thoughts and desires instead he says it leads us to pride and the next point we see here is angels must be worshipped. So in chapter 2, verse 18, we see that Paul is addressing about this. He says that angels are not to be worshipped. Christ alone is worthy of all our worship. The next heresy we see here is Christ could not be both human and divine. So we see that in chapter 1. verse 15 to 20 and also chapter 2 verse 2 to 3 we see that he addressing christ is god in the flesh christ is god in the flesh and he is the eternal one the head of the body and also the next heresy we see here is must, one must obtain secret knowledge in order to be saved or perfected. This was not available to everyone. So for this, Paul answers in chapter 2, verse 2, and also in 18. He says that God's secret is Christ and he has been revealed to all. God's secret is Christ and he has been revealed to all. And the next one is one must adhere to human wisdom, tradition and philosophies. We see that again in chapter 2 verse 4, he addressing that. He says that now this I say, lest anyone should deceive you with pervasive words and also uh, verse 8 to 10 is asking us to be, be aware be aware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit and 15 to 17 we see that uh, you know having disarmed principalities and powers he made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them at and he also says that these are the shadows of things to come but the substance is of christ so paul is answering to us saying that <clears throat> these things can be misleading and shallow because they have human origin Instead, we should remember what Christ thought so that we can follow his words as an ultimate authority. Simple words, Paul is asking us, let the word of God be your final authority. So the next heresy we see here is, it is even better to combine aspects of several religions. For that, uh, Paul answers in chapter 2, verse 10. 
He says, and you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. So we see that Paul answering, you have everything and you have Christ and he is all sufficient. He is more than enough. He is all sufficient for each one of us. And with that, we will move on to the last heresy <clears throat> that is listed in the letter. That is, <clears throat> there is nothing wrong with immorality. Chapter 3, verse... <clears throat> sorry. Verse 1 to 11, we see that. I just give you the summary of that. Paul is stating, get rid of sin and evil because... You have been chosen by God to live a new life where you will be the representative of Lord Jesus. You are the ambassador of Christ. And you are a new being. You are a new creation. So Paul is asking us to get rid of sin and evil from our life because God has chosen each one of us. And we are the new, we have new life and we are the new creation in Christ Jesus. So with that, um, yeah, we have still time. So let me go through the theme. As this is a, a short letter, I thought uh, I'll take some time to uh, go through the theme, which is there in each chapter, as it is a very interesting letter. I thought I'll go through the uh, each chapter, the theme of each chapter. So chapter one has the theme about the superiority of Christ and reconciliation in him. So walking worthy. Wait, let me put that at the slide. Okay, sorry, I don't have it at the slide. Yeah, these are the themes, chapter-wise themes. So Paul, uh, you know, when we go through the chapter one, we see that how Paul opens the letter in thanksgiving and prayer and highlights the Colossians' faith in Christ Jesus and the love that they have for all the saints. And in and he reconciles to himself all things, making peace by the blood of Jesus on the cross. And also in chapter 2, in chapter 2, we see that the theme is life in Christ. He talks about the grace. So Paul continues with an exhortation in chapter 2. He says that, um, therefore, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. Verse 6, walk in him. Be rooted and built up in him and established in faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. And we, uh, we also uh, see that in chapter 2, that these have indeed an appearance of the wisdom in promoting self-made religion, but they are no value in stopping the indulgence of the flesh. And in chapter 3, he addresses the theme as seeking what is above putting on love of God. So he's asking us to walk with God as his chosen one. So if you have, uh, we see that uh, chapter 3, verse 1 and 2, that if you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God, Set your mind on things about, not on things on the earth. So he is asking us to have heavenly mind. We need to uh, look at God, the higher call. Have a heavenly mind. Have a Christ mind. So now Paul is pleading through this letter to the Colossians to set our mind on things that are above. Putting on the new self. He is also asking us to uh, put uh, to death every earthly things or every earthly desire that is trying to occupy us 
and replace it with what is holy and beloved in the eyes of the Lord. He also gives us a godly guidelines for the household, for the family, where he's asking, he's asking, he's encouraging us, wives are to submit to their husbands and husband has to the has to love their wife and not to provoke their children. And he reminds us that is a, one of the purpose as we serve God. So the theme of chapter four is walking in steadfast wisdom and prayer. So walking in wisdom should be a final greetings that Paul is addressing here. So walk in wisdom, we see that in verse 5 and 6, walk in wisdom toward those who are outside, redeeming the time. Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. So in this final part of the letter, we see that um, uh, Paul focuses on prayer and thanksgiving and he asks the Colossians to keep himself in their prayer as his ministry continues to progress. And in verse 5 and 6, we see that he's addressing the wisdom and the way we are to expect it and way we are expected to speak with others. So in verse 7 uh, through 18, he summarizes saying that Paul's plan for the future and uh, the current events of that time. And he mentions Tichikas, a beloved minister and brother. And he shows and he closes with sending grace to the Colossians and ask them fervently to remember him in prayer as he is in chains. So uh, the application are the four themes that we saw today. That is, chapter 1 talks about in Christ alone. Chapter 2 talks about living in the light of God's grace. And chapter 3 talks about walking with God as his chosen one. And 4 talks about walking in steadfast wisdom and prayer. There are some of the heresies. And also we see that how Paul is asking us to put off the old man and put on the new man. It's very, very important. So maybe our old self uh, were indulged in speaking lies, but our new self here, Paul is encouraging us when we are in Christ, we no more um, be like the old person, but here we strive hard to speak the truth. We try to be honest in labor by giving and uh, edifying our conversation, being kind, tender-hearted, and forgiving love, goodness, righteousness, and filled with the Holy Spirit. Whereas the old man had the opposite traits, opposite character of what the new man, uh, the new lifestyle that we try to live in, we accept Jesus as a Lord and Savior. Whereas this is very important that we saw the difference between the old self and the new. With that, I'll get back, uh, I go up to the reflection. So what is it? Through this letter, we learn that Jesus is the head of the church. And he has reconciled all things to himself through his death on the cross, making the believers alive to God and setting them on the path of right living. As Jesus did this for each of us, can we reflect on our life and, uh, and question us saying that, are we giving Jesus the place he deserves in our life? Can we ponder on this question? That are we giving Jesus the place that he deserves in our life? And I leave this time open to our class where you can share your learning, your inputs based on this letter. Feel free to unmute and share or you can type it on the chat. Over to the class. Ma'am, can I share something? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Ma'am, I would like to read one verse. Colossians chapter 2, verses 9. For in Christ, all the fullness of the deity live in the bodily form. 
Ma'am, when I whenever I read Colossians, this word is very fascinating for me, because in this in in this portion, Apostle Paul he is trying to present present Jesus as the center of the universe, not only as an active creator but also a recipient in creation. He is talking like he is want to portray. He is taking human flesh, Christ when Christ when Jesus Christ took human flesh, he was. He was an image of invisible God, containing Himself in the full deity. So, like when I, whenever I am reading this, this word is all always reminding me of Jesus Christ's fullness and authority. Amen. Amen. This is, thank you. This thank I you, Sid. That's me. wonderful. Thank you, Sid. That was wonderful insight for sharing it. Yes. How about others? You would like to add, share your insight, learning from this letter. Lyndon, Leah Lama, anyone from the class that you would like to share, add? Okay. If there's no questions or no discussions, okay, we can end the session with a word of prayer. Who can pray? Lyndon, can you pray? Okay. Brother Lubega, would you like to pray? Father, yes. let's pray. Father, we thank you for this wonderful day and session we've had, Lord, as we concluded the book, the epistle of Colossians, which was written to us by Apostle Paul. Lord, as we've learned, and as I can see, we can always put, we must always put Jesus Christ first in both yes. our personal and our corporate lives, Lord, as in so doing by chasing away all the heresies in our lives and those who preach wrong doctrine to us so that we can be presented to Jesus Christ as a church without fault. We do pray and believe that we shall come again to meet next week on Monday and Tuesday, Lord, to have more in this doctrine, Lord. So, Lord, please send us your Holy Spirit to remind us and guide us in everything that we do. Please, Lord, let everybody who has attended this lesson and this class, Lord, be blessed and have a wonderful day. Just as when Jesus Christ, before he went in heaven, he said, peace be upon you. So, Lord, we also okay. pray that peace be upon us and the house yes. of the pastor and everybody. We believe that everything will come to pass in your due time. Not our will be done, but your will be done. We do pray in the name amen. of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And everybody says, Amen. amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Lubega, for your wonderful prayer. Thank you. God bless. Thank you so much for joining in today's session. I encourage each one to be part of the Thursday Mentoring Hour and also the Supernatural Hour on Friday. Okay. So have a blessed week ahead. God bless. See you all next week. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Happy Women's Day. Thank you. Thank you, Sid. God bless. Thank you.